are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah? Thanks, yeah. Thanks for coming here. Now, do you like me to say your whole name or? Well, you could say it once and just get it over with. Hanlon? Hanlon. Hanlon. It's an Irish name. Yeah. was O'Hanlon well, at what point. Grohl's Irish, isn't it? Grohl? Ain't that Irish? That's pretty German. Kind of German-Irish thing. A little German, yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming in here. I was happy to. So you got a uh, you got a book thing tomorrow with your son at yes. the uh, at the Grove Barnes and Noble at the Grove. We'll we'll do a conversation they call it. We in, just plop down in some chairs and he starts talking. Yeah, and, and you then answer. I get in every you know ten minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, get in a word. It's very comfortable. It's fun. I, I you know you was at the uh, festival of books last week. On a Saturday, weren't you? Yes. I, would, I went on a Sunday. I got a book out, too. Oh, you do? Yeah. Are you doing the conversations? I did I did the conversation. Okay. And well, I maybe you should join us. And I did Barnes & Noble, too. Yeah? Yeah. And I did Book Soup. Went to New York. Promoted it there. Are you doing any touring around the country or just staying in We LA? went to New York and did the Strand Bookstore. Yeah, I did that one. That's a, okay. That was a good one. Yes, it is. Was it just you or you and your son? Me and my son. And then we went to D.C., and we did it at the Black Cat, a small rock club there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which uh, usually has, well, Bob Mould was playing that night. Yeah. And we had the early time on stage, and a 1,000 people came. Well, 2,000 showed up for me. No kidding. No, I'm kidding. Why? Do, <laughs> just to hear two people talk about... Nothing they planned to talk about. Well, you were selling books too, though, right? They probably wanted to get a book yes, signed. I, I, yeah, I signed a whole lot of books. Yeah. 550, as a matter of fact, in record time. I sold 2,000 and signed 25,000. <gasps> I'm so jealous. In well, one minute. Well, oh, tell me the title of your book. Lonely Boy. Oh, I must read that. Yes. Yes, you should talk to my mum, Do you too. have one here? I don't know. There could be one somewhere okay. over to the other side. We could probably get someone to get one if someone over there is listening. That you would sign for me before I leave here, wouldn't you? Well, That'd depends. be nice. Depends how this goes. Okay. No, of course I would. All right, then. So, yeah, my mum my mum is, is in it, but I don't really have a relationship. You should, you should oh. have, have a chat with her. Well, I should have. I had a, I had a weird upbringing with my mum. Where were you? In London. Oh, West London. Yeah. You been there? I've been to London. I'm not sure which part is which part, but I do love London. Yeah. How long did it take you to do the book? It took three years because I had to travel a lot to meet all these mothers. Right. And they were all over. One was in London. Oh, I wish uh, I would have known. <laughs> I would have sent you around. My mom, she lives in Putney. Maybe I'll do that as my next book, Mothers of Radio Stars. How would that one go? I don't think there's many. Not many radio stars, only me. I was thinking Howard Stern. Nah, he's nothing. I don't know. He's, he's history. I know nothing about you guys, I must say. That's I okay. have no background here. So. That's okay. Okay. Um, well, it took me three years, and I, I made very good friends because the women I talked to were people I hadn't met before, and we just have this incredible thing in common that other mothers can't talk about. They don't understand yeah. that part of the mother-son journey, her mother-daughter. And so we became good friends. And, um, and now I'm hearing from them now that the book's out and they're all, they're all happy with it. Because so they're in it. That's, yeah, and they don't mind the way their stories turned out. Oh. Uh. So that's pretty good. I was a little worried in a few cases, but they, they quite like it. Did um, <coughs> is there is there one common theme, all mothers? Was it all boys, sons, or was there no. any women? There was Miranda Lambert, yeah. um, Amy Winehouse. Oh, is that um, what you went to London for? Yes, Kelly Clarkson. I tried to get more women. Actually, that one of my goals was to have more women. And they were harder to get to say yes to do the book. Because um, their mothers, what, with, with women, are jealous of this? 
daughters? No, I don't think so. I never thought of that. Because mothers, uh, boys, like mothers, boys, right? And sometimes the mothers and daughters always get into it with each other. That's not as easy a, a relationship, I understand, just traditionally. Yeah. But what I think was the case was that the mothers of the daughters were maybe more protective than uh. they would have been of sons. And maybe rightfully so, because I don't think women in music or any other place are as fairly treated when people write about them they write about oh how they look and how much weight they've gained and what their latest love story's been and yeah. it's not so much about the music as it is about all the other things that go with it so well that's why it's good that a woman is doing that because then you will understand as opposed to a man writing mm -hmm. about a woman it's good that you're doing it about other women right and i yeah but I, the, but the ones I got uh, were intensely interesting, and I was delighted to have them. Do you live in L.A.? Some of the time. I'm here and in Virginia. Seattle. You're not from Seattle? No, no. Uh, David grew up in Virginia, right outside D.C. Yeah. So that's where our home is. And um, then, of course, he came out here, and so now... My whole family's here. My daughter's here. My son's here. And my grandchildren are here. So, so there's, it's hard to be somewhere else. Yeah. So is is Dave only child? I have a daughter. I haven't looked at his book yet. So, forgive me if I don't know. Well, anything. I recommend it. Well, I've got it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I don't read books, but I hear it's really good. I, there's an audio book too. Did you do that? I did. I did mine too. Okay. Was that a nightmare or what? Oh, I loved it. You're kidding me. It was four days sitting down. Four days? Mm -hmm. It took me 60 hours to do mine. Is that more than four days? How well, many hours ago did you do? I'm old, so they're easy on me. They, they thought she can make it if we give her four days, stretch it out. That's incredible. How yeah. many hours a day did you do doing it? Though? Oh, I don't know. I had time out for lunch, came in in the morning. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe six hours a day. You must have went to school, though. You probably got good reading skills like normal reading skills well i did teach public speaking see see yeah that's why you did so it. so i enjoyed it mm -hmm. i'm i'm glad i did mine too with from it's good when it's from the author i didn't want anybody else doing it yeah and i wasn't sure i'd be able to do it but um i did and so i hope people enjoy it and at the end of it for the special deal on if you buy the audiobook they had david come in because he wrote the preface to the book, you'll see when you open it. And um, so they had him come in, and then he and I did, that was our first conversation. Yeah. So we did a 20 minute chat. So you've done a bunch of, uh, so you've, you've, you've done a bunch of this, and this is not new right now. You've been on the road for, for a week. Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah. I, I, my experience goes maybe a week and a half. So that's it. I'm still sort of new to it. Did you ever go on the road with the Foo Fighters? I did. Quite a few times. I yeah. had a great time. Yeah. I went places I'd never get to. I went to Australia. I went to Japan. Went to London and Ireland many, many times. I've been to the Reading Festival, I think, seven times. Have you? Yes. I've been once. Well, then, that's one place I'm ahead of you. <laughs> Is somebody keeping score here? Is there a little checklist? You're a real rock and roller. I, I have been. I don't like going out. I like oh. staying at home. I don't even like traveling. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, the traveling part is getting worse and more wearing all the time. But once I get there, I'm really happy I'm there. So, yeah, I've enjoyed... Um, Festival times especially are fun. And I love being in Ireland. That's always great. I sort of feel like I belong there. I don't know. Why don't you move there? I, Rains if everybody would go with me, I'd, I'd I think I'd be happy there. Where, whereabouts in Ireland? S there's some places south of Dublin. Out in the, out in the country? Yes, yes. It's just so beautiful there. It is. 
They get People a lot of rain, that's why. Yes, of course. Everything stays green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's wonderful. Um, did, did, did you... Uh, you should have interviewed Phil Linnett, Phil Lynott's mum. I think she lives in Ireland. You know, Thin Lizzy, the band Thin Lizzy. I didn't interview anybody from them, no. She, she has a museum there, actually, about oh. for Thin Lizzy, for Phil Lynott. Okay. Yeah. I think she's still alive. Do you know the band Thin Lizzy? Not very well, I must say. I know your boy does. Yeah, pro oh, well, he knows it all. Yeah. Has he played with them? Uh, well, he's dead, Phil. But he plays he he plays some of their songs. Okay. I think it's on the. Uh, I think he plays a Finn Lizzy song, on the. Uh, the rare we got that right. Is there? A fin Let's play a Finn Lizzy one. Okay. This is this is your boy, Foo Fighters, doing a, a Finn Lizzy song. Great. We're here with Virginia, Hanlon, Grohl. David's mum, she's got a book out. They're doing a thing tomorrow at the uh, the Grove at Barnes & Noble at 7 p.m. You ready to rock and roll? Let's go. Take it away, son. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS with my guest, Virginia Grohl. Hello. Good morning. Do you like the music I'm playing? You know, I wasn't listening. I was listening to your conversation, which I very much enjoyed. Do you like rock and roll? I do. Uh, what was your, what was your, when you was a teen, what was you listening to? Oh, well, I was a teen in the 50s. So rock and roll. I hadn't started yet, really. Um, I was listening to uh, Blueberry Hill and... Uh, Fast Domino. Yeah. Things like that. Good, that was where, good, good stuff. Oh yeah, we had good things to dance to, and um, and then and there was a lot of classic sort of big band, big bands, which I loved. And um, did you notice the big difference from big bands to rock and roll? How it was more <laughs> rebellious, and, and everyone di didn't like it at first. Yeah, everything changed. But um, I was actually in a girl group. In the 50s. That's got to be in the book. It is. Okay. We were called the Three Bells. Clever name that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and we were pretty good. And we sang standards like T for Two and, you know, Rogers and Hart things, show tune things. And we were um, a hit in the community. We sang at the Kiwanis Club and the uh, Women's City Club and um, things like that. There was never any danger in the clubs we <laughs> were uh, going to, and our mothers all gave us permission. What year was that? Fifty-five, around then. So that's ten years after the war ended. Yes, yes. Was you aware of the war when it ended? Oh, I was. My father was there. My father was a CB in the Navy, which meant that he went ahead of the action to build airstrips and things. So he was in uh, Okinawa in Japan. I didn't quite know how much danger he was in, but I still have his letters uh, from those days. They're, uh, they're the most cherished things I have. Was and you, was you close to your dad? Very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. I remember my grandmother, my whole family, sitting by the radio listening to Roosevelt. Yeah. And I remember that there were no men around. They were all gone, yeah. they were all in the war, and it was all, uh, the whole neighborhood was women. I remembered rationing, yeah. and I remember a lot. I was, you know, old enough to know what, a little bit about what was going on. He was aware of it. Yes, and then after, when when he came home, then we, we had a, we had got a lovely house out in the suburbs outside, sort of in the country. And on the GI Bill, and um, and so it we was kind grew of up. A, started booming then, didn't it? Yes. America and started taking off. Yes, yes. Big and cars, fridges. Well, people started having cars again, and um, so yeah, everybody had one car though. It was just like that, and um, we 
we were the community I grew up in and my friends and I, we look back on it now and think, you know, the incredible differences that we've seen over the years, but it was a very wholesome time. Mm -hmm. It was also a very, there are a few years of safety before all the Cold War tensions came, and then uh, it, we were sort of blissfully happy. Yeah, it was almost like uh, an innocence to it. There, it was for sure, yeah. Same in England. So we had, we enjoyed singing and, and having shows and doing things like that. Did you all wear the same outfits, like suits? No, we had one. We had two outfits, I guess. We had jackets. Ke Kelly Green jumpers. Uh, when a jumper is different in America than it, as it is in English. Uh, a jumper there is a sweater in England. A jumper here is a like a one-piece dress that you wear over a blouse. They're, a hip, they're hip now in Silver Lake, them things. I'm sure. I've All the kids are wearing them in silver. Are they? I wouldn't know. <laughs> but um, that's what we did. So that was fun. Yeah. And it was a short, happy career. We uh, we didn't look for record deals. <laughs> yeah. We just went to college and moved on. So you 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 was you looking at it as like being successful or it was no, just fun? No, never. It just was just a laugh. fun thing to do. And we were proud of it. We thought. Well, there was a group then called the McGuire Sisters. Yeah. How many of them was there? Three? three, yeah. And there were three of us. So we compared ourselves. We thought we were a little better. Of course. But, yeah. So did you, uh, what made you, what made you want to write a book? Was it your idea to write a book? I had a friend who urged me. I had the idea at with her, one of us had the idea when we were sitting on the side of a stage and I said, I wonder why I'm the only mother here because I've been going to these shows and festivals for a long time. There aren't that many other mums there. I don't know if you noticed when you were playing. Probably not a whole lot of mothers backstage. Am I right? <laughs> With thank, sex pistols? Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been, but I don't know what happened there. But anyway, um, she said, well, you should go find them. And I know that sounds terribly simple, but as we left the backstage area, we were making a list of people to go find. Yeah. And so, and she helped me on the first couple. She's a music attorney, Jill Berliner. And um, so she helped me develop a list. And uh, then I started writing letters. Yeah. Dear Mom, how would you like to sit down, have a cup of tea, and talk? Yeah. So what do you think, what do you think the concept, uh, now that it's finished, what, 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 what do you think it's about? Is it, is it about anything other, other than just interviewing? Yes. It's about how all their histories, and their histories are varied. They're from very different places and times. Getty Lee's mom grew up in a Nazi concentration camp at Auschwitz. Wow. Um, Dave Matthews' mom was in um, South Africa during apartheid mm. and during the change. Mm -hmm. And she saw that uh, huge shift in history. And there were um, women from the South, from Texas, and, and from Georgia, and then, so we all had very different stories and, and beginnings and histories, and I was interested in whether or not and how those histories played into the, the relationships and then the music that came from the sons and daughters we had, mm. and I found, of course, that they did, mm. when you examine some of the lyrics from Dave Matthews, you see those stories, and from Getty Lee. And um, so, and then the other thing was the, what we had in common in the raising of, of musicians. Mm -hmm. So we bonded very quickly. We had, I had a wonderful time talking to them and, and knowing them, getting to know them, and still keep in touch with them. How was it um, talking to uh, Amy Winehouse's mom? Was, was she still alive when you did that? No, she no, died. she'd been dead for two years. 
her mother had I was worried about that one yeah of course um, and that was the one I prepared for the others I went in without an agenda and without background and all of that I just showed up and we started to talk but for that one I was worried and read three books I think about Amy and did you see uh, the documentary that she did I did that was later but her mother had written a book about her that came out two days before I got there, which I knew nothing about. Mm. She gave me a copy. So um, we sat in her garden for three or four hours, I guess. And hers, w that was the biggest surprise of all the people I talked to because it was an easy conversation. And she was very much at peace with everything that had happened and probably the most optimistic person I've ever met in my life. Mm. Just her outlook is, uh, well, to say sunny sounds ridiculous, but it really is almost that. She was a tortured soul, Amy Winehouse. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. She started out as a yeah. tiny child. She was different and, and independent and resistant to any discipline yeah. from the very beginning. Yeah. So her mother has been through a lot. Yeah, a lot of suffering. Yes, and she's just very, well, she says all the time, I love life, I'm going to live it. Yeah. I'm going to. Well, that's a good outlook. You gotta get on with things. I you guess so. You can't hold on to the past forever, otherwise. Well, if anyone's proof of that, I'd say she is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Virginia Grohl got a new book out. Got conversation with your boy tomorrow, Dave, at Barnes and Noble at the Grove at seven PM. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You better bring some pens. Well, you can give me notes on how to do these conversations you you've been doing those well we're doing it right now this is it well that's true that's what this is this isn't is it? it yeah exactly. i'm enjoying this one yeah am i better than your son at talking to you interviewing you have a different accent altogether yeah. i must say it's better is it <laughs> okay don't you think it's better i'm it's enjoying English. it i'm enjoying it I, d I do like that get away with murder this accent should we play some music let's velvet underground I'm waiting for the man. Jones's jukebox on Carlos with Virginia Grohl. <laughs> 